I'm going to answer the question. What Jesus Christ came to fulfill was there's five categories of law. There is a dietary law. Did Christ fulfill that? No, he did not. You black, you ain't supposed to eat swine. Did Jesus Christ fulfill the moral law? No, you got to deal with your brother morally. Did he fulfill the civil law? No, how you deal civically. Did he fulfill the laws on dealing with the uh, ceremonial, the, the laws of God? No. What about the sacrificial laws? Did Christ come to fulfill the sacrificial laws? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Now, my question is this. Did Jesus Christ do away with God's law? Because this is going to... This is going to tie into what you were saying. He came to fulfill it. Right. He absolutely did. Now, did Jesus Christ do away with all the laws of God or a portion of the laws of God? For example, thou shalt not steal is the law of God. Did Christ do away with that? So the confusion in the church is what part of the law did he fulfill? I'm going to prove it to you today. Right. Now, let's start slow. Matthew 5, 17. Bring it up. I'm going to connect the dots and make a real plane for y'all. This guy, what? I need you to focus over here. Come on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. <laughs> Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Jesus Christ, these are the words in red. Are you with me? The words in red are when Jesus is speaking. Did you are you paying? Did you know that the words in red are when Jesus is speaking? All right, so we've all together. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. He said, I ain't come to destroy my father's law. Read. Or the prophets. Or what the prophets said. Who are the prophets of God? Jeremiah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Obadiah, Moses. Those were the prophets. Of the, and guess what? They look like you. You didn't know that Mary, the mother of Christ, looked like you? You ain't know that? Well, if you don't know, well, now you know. That's Read, right. come on. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So that's the million dollar question. Jesus Christ, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came to fulfill. What did he come to fulfill? Matthew chapter 2, 23? Help me out, Seth. Uh, oh, yeah. Matthew 24. Get it for me. That's it, Luke. So, this is what he came to fulfill. Matter of fact, Song. you give me that. Hold that, Hebrews 10. I'm going to answer the question. What Jesus Christ came to fulfill was, there's five categories of law. There is a dietary law. Did Christ fulfill that? No, he did not. You black, you ain't supposed to eat swine. Did Jesus Christ fulfill the moral law? No, you got to deal with your brother morally. Did he fulfill the civil law? No, how you deal civically. Did he fulfill the laws on dealing with the uh, ceremonial, the, the laws of God? No. What about the sacrificial laws? Did Christ come to fulfill the sacrificial laws? Maybe that's, yeah, I like that. Bring it out. Hey, come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. Wait, stop, hold that, John 129. 
We're going to show you step by step. Lying Christian pastors, bring them all out here right now. Bring them here in front of me right now. Bring it out. I don't know why, because you know why you, you hear your brother tell you the truth today. That's the difference. And boy, our forefathers, the Maccabees, Christ, we're fierce and they were powerful men. That's why you're here. Because you know I'm telling you the truth. Wait. John chapter 1 and verse 29. Like you said, come on. The next day, John sealed Jesus. Hold up. John is seeing Jesus off in the distance. This is the next day. You paying attention? He's off in left field. So this guy, read. Coming unto hell. So they saw, John saw Jesus the next day coming in. Watch what he calls him. Read. And say him, behold, the Lamb of God. Now, you ain't, you're not reading it. Stop. Read it right, please. The next day, John sealed Jesus coming unto him. And say him, behold, the Lamb of God. What? Didn't hear you. The Lamb of God. What did he say to Jesus? Behold, the Lamb of God. Wait, did Christ dress up in a giant sheep suit or lamb suit? Looking like lamb of the sheep is lying? Galloping? Why are you calling him the Lamb of God? I'm going to prove to you why. Hold that. Give me Ephesians chapter 5. This Bring it out. Says, uh, matter of fact, give me Hebrews 10. Now, but what he fulfilled, brother, was that the, the, the office of animal sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. Right. Did they did they sacrifice rhinoceroses, the Israelites? No, no, no. What they sacrifice? They sacrifice bullocks, turtle doves, and lambs. Right. right. Watch, I'm gonna prove it. Hebrews 10 and 1. Right. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Now this is Paul. By the way, I told you, we proved that Paul was a black man. Right. Without a shadow of a doubt. This is Paul writing some things that are hard to be understood. We're going to make it plain for you. Read. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the commas there unto earth. We're going to break this down. Read it again. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. What law? The law that should not steal? No. The law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of things that was better to come down the line. Great. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year. Wait, did they Christ died year by year? No, the animals died every year. At every feast of tabernacles, Passover, they kept killing animals over and over again. Right. Mosiah said that shadow was the shadow of things to come. Pray. They offered year by year, continually make the commerce thereunto perfect. Read on, come on. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Right, because they kept having to offer sacrifice, but they kept being wicked as hell. Great. Because that the worshippers, once purged, should have had no more conscience of sins. Now hold up. Watch verse 4. This is what Christ came to fulfill. The only thing Jesus Christ came to fulfill is the office of animal sacrifice for forgiveness of sins, along with all of the rituals that we're doing. There was an altar. You had to kill an animal a certain way. They used to sprinkle the blood. All of that, Christ, he fulfilled that. But that don't mean you can eat pork. That don't mean God loves everybody now. That don't mean that the black man is not the Israelite. That's, That's right. right. Hebrews 10 and verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Stop. You see that? Read it. You, you see that? You ain't got to go nowhere. Listen. Read it again. I got some for, in my father. I got a, I got a vision nurse. All right, sister. Read it. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats, it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats, right, should take away sins. Should take away sins. It's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats would take away sins. Watch this, right? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Wait, who cometh into the world? Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Christ took away the sacrifice and offering for forgiveness of sins. Watch this, he's going to tell you. But a body has thou prepared me. Right. It, it, is that, does that mean the animal body? Because uh, if you kill a, a lamb, that's a body, right? That body is talking about Christ. That's right. right. Now, my question to you is, what did his body look like? What did Jesus' body look like? Right. Now, hold up the damn devil. Right, let's hold up. Let's, you see this right here? This, as far, you, the brother said, as far as we know, because they taught us in slavery that white is right and everything good with whiteness is going to save you. That's the image of Jesus that they gave us. Some with blonde hair, blue eye, 
That is the image of the beast. Right. That taught you lies, that taught you hypocrisy. Right. Now, I asked you, what did the, remember they said, but a body, so Christ had a physical body. Right. So what did Christ's body look like? We got, well, we know that his relative, Paul, was black. Now let me ask you a question. Christ, now Moses was from the, the same line as Jesus Christ, correct? So if I can show you that Christ is black and Moses is black, what does that mean about all the other Jews that was there? I'm going to show you Revelation 1. Bring it out. Hold that Daniel chapter 10. Bring it out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to ancient Babylon. Daniel the prophet. I need you to pay attention. I'm not going to go too deep. Daniel had a vision. Remember Daniel had visions. Yes. Daniel had a vision about the Messiah to come. And Daniel and John saw the same thing. I'm going to prove to you. So why is this important? Because the man the body was required, he needs to have honor paid unto him. Because the confusion is in the church that God came for everybody. That's a lie, brother. And I'm going to clear that up. Read. The book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked. Stop. 10 and 1. 10 verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Daniel, was he free in his captivity? Daniel was a slave. Right. Daniel was a slave. You blocks are slaves still. Because you're the real Jews. You're the yeah. Israelites. That's you right. never let, let free yet. Bring. A thing was revealed unto Daniel. So Daniel was a black man. He had a vision. Something was revealed to him when he was a slave in his captivity. Bring. Unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. They changed his name. Like your last name, if it's Johnson, you got it from your slave master. Right. You got you, he got his name from his slave master. This is this is the Bible. Wait. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. Right, now we're gonna jump. He sees a vision about the Messiah to come. What does Messiah mean, brother? Who is the Messiah? You don't know who the Messiah, who the Messiah is. Jesus, the Savior. Right. He's got to save us from our enemies. Read. Verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. So Daniel gets a vision. He looks up and he sees a man, a man, not a spirit, a man clothed in linen. Pay attention, read. Whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphat. So his garment that he had on was a, was a royal garment. Right? Watch this. His body also was like the pearl. Remember before it said, a body I will require of you. This is the body of the Messiah that John Daniel is seeing. Read. And his face as the appearance of lightning. I Meaning he had a glow in his face of power. Read. And his eyes as lamps of fire. His eyes was the lamps of fire. Remember that part? I'm going to link it up later. Come on. And his arms and his feet like in like color to so polish brass. Now, Jesus Christ's color is described in Revelation as well. He had skin as a polished brass. You can call it what you want. Brass is a brownish metal. I'm not going to argue that. That's what it is. Read. And the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude. He had a very loud voice when he talked. It sounded like a lot of people talking. Hold that Revelation 1. Bring it up. I'm going to show you that this body, Jesus Christ, was a black man. And nobody on this planet Earth can dispute it any other way. I don't care if you bring me Prefro Dollar. I don't care if you bring me Donald Day Trump. I'm going to tell him the same doggone thing because the truth can't be hidden no more. Right. Read. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to get clarity on Daniel's vision. Why is this important? Because until you get in your mind that the, the Messiah that came to save you is a black man, we can't go by anything else. You've got to understand that. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Read again. I'm approved he is talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's who John is revealing in this chapter. Read. Which God gave unto him. God gave him the vision of Jesus. Not his own imagination. He said it right there. Read. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now, with God, a day is as a, a thousand years. When he said shortly come to pass, in the future, down the line, Christ, what he looked like, would be caught up in a lie. 
They wrote it so in a short amount of time, which for about a day in the Lord is a thousand years, that we would understand who the Messiah really was, who he represented and who he looked like. Great. Verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Stop. Now this is important. So he said, John was given a vision by God to bear record and write down the things that he saw. Why would he write down an image of Jesus that he saw if everybody knew what he looked like then? Right. Because down the road, you would get this image. Yep. Ask a black man in America what Jesus looked like. He's, a, he's afraid to even say the white man is his enemy. He's right. even afraid to say that. You know. Great. Less is he that read it. So today we're going through the Bible and reading and explaining to both you men precept upon precept. We're showing you what Jesus looked like because it said, a body I require of him in Hebrews to touch up. Great. Less is he that read it and they that hear the words of this prophecy. When you read this Bible and you begin to hear the words we're bringing out, you're going to be blessed. Now jump to the part where it says verse, uh, we're going to start at verse 11 because this is how you know Christ is this man. Read. Say, I am Alpha and Omega. Who's the Alpha and Omega? Jesus is the beginning and the Alpha and the Omega. Read. The first and the last, because Christ was around when God created the heavens. You know when, you do that, when you read John 1. And what thou seest, write in a book. So now John, now he's the Alpha and Omega saying, John, what you write, what you see, write this down. Verse 3 it says, bear record and write the things down. So twice it says it, read. And send it unto the, unto the seven churches, which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna. Now the seven churches were Israelite congregations around the greater Met Mediterranean Sea area. That's why he goes and he starts naming the congregations. Great. And unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira. Now jump, I want you to jump the part where it says, um, I turn to the voice, listen good. Verse 12, and I turn to see the voice that spake with me. Stop, hold up. We need a visual. Come on. Read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So John turned to the voice that spake with him. Who was speaking? Read. And being turned, I saw. Wait, wait. Read it again. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. He turned and he saw. Remember, he was commanded to write these things down. Read. Hey, can I quit? And being turned, I saw. Stop. Read it again. What? And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. He turned to see the voice that spake to him, Read. And being turned, I saw. He said again, then I turned myself around. Read. I saw seven golden candlesticks. He saw a vision of a menorah with seven golden candlesticks, Read. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, in the midst of this candlestick, pay attention. This is supposed to be a proud day in your life, young Bring man. Bring it out. Read. One like unto the Son of Man. He's describing Christ, the Son of Man. Pray. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Now, this is not the exact image. We're showing you the imagery. Read. And girt about the pouch with a golden girt. Come on. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. As much as we tried to hide our woolly hair. That's why our brothers don't want to rock the fro no more. Bring That's why out. black women put straight blonde hair in their head. They're not happy with their woolly hair. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Jesus Christ had a beard and a head white like wool. White and woolly is texture of black people. Read. As white as snow. And his eyes was as they, I'm sorry. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You remember, Daniel said his eyes were like lightning. Now we're linking this up, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? We learned about it before. Daniel the prophet, who was a slave in Babylon, was telling about the Messiah to come. John was commanded to turn and write down what Christ looked like here, read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brown, read. As if they burned in a furnace. Now listen. A lot of times brothers use the word rice. 
if I took your shirt that's made out of plaid material and I burn it, it's going to turn what? Right. If I take white paper, white rice, if I take, I don't know, a yellow piece of tape, it's going to turn black. Huh? Jesus is black. I want you to see that. That's what he looked like. Now go back to Hebrews 10. Watch this. Go back to Hebrews 10. Nothing to do with the white Jesus is a damn lie. Bring it out. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou hast no pleasure. Now hold up. I wanted one more scripture for you. Because I want you to get out of your mind that God loves all people. Get me. What what okay, how do you get there? You want to know that? Give me Matthew 19, verse 16. Bring it out. How do we get to everlasting life? It's the same thing that Moses prophesied in the wilderness. If you don't keep the commandments as an Israelite, you're not getting everlasting. I'm gonna prove it right now. Matthew 19, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him. So one came up to Jesus Christ and said unto him. He's asking him a question, actually. He's not making a statement. He's asking him a question. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said to Christ, Master, what do I have to do that I can in inherit what? Eternal life. So that's your question. What about eternal life? We're going to get to it, really. And he said unto him, why call this thou me good? He said, why are you call me good? Because he's giving all honor and glory to who? His father, right, Ray? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. Into what? Into life. Keep the commandments. What do you got to do to get to eternal life? That's are right. you keeping all the commandments of the Lord? Guess what? And that's why we brought out the beard, because we're not trying to get on you. You got to grow your beard. There's a lot of things you got to do, brother. But what we have to do is understand that God made us, he made the Israelites better than all races, all people. Then why do you think that it, it took it until they had us enslaved for all those years? And I, I don't know if you noticed it now, and I studied black history extensively. After 1865, there was a period called post-reconstruction. You ever heard of it? Do you know during that time from 1875 until uh, 18, I think it was 1895, there was more black elected officials than any time in the history. That's when they brought out the Jim Law Coast, because they see we started to rise right after post-reconstruction. We started to rise. And they had they, they systematically destroyed us until 1965. And they told us, listen, they're the ones who said, white water fountains and color. They're the ones who said that. So we can't talk about black Jesus? No, you, the black men are too weak nowadays. Right. We gotta up. stand up for God, man. And now you have to wait, give me Psalms 94, uh, 16. Who's to stand up for me? You gotta ask yourself as a man. I see that you are a brother, man. You wanna stand up for God? Find out what he wants you to do and fix it first for you. Remember before, we're going over what law Christ fulfilled. He did not fulfill the ceremonial law of tabernacles and Passover. He did not fulfill how you deal with your brother morally. He did not fulfill how you deal civilly with your nation. Nor did he fulfill the dietary laws. But he did fulfill the law of sacrifice. And that's where black people got it twisted. And I'm proving to you right now, read. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. But did not the Israelites sacrifice animals for forgiveness of sins? Remember, John said, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God. Now this chapter, Paul is writing to the Israelites who are the scholars, telling them the understanding of the changing of God with sacrifice and how it was done. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Right, the animal side, he, he didn't want that. Read on. But a body thou hast prepared me. So that body was Christ. That's why I went and showed you that Paul was a black man, and so was Christ. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. 
From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth